Hey everybody, welcome back to the frequency. Today's frequency is called Nice Jits. Mm, got some nice jits there. <laughs> uh, but like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty much going to be a video about being female and being in the male dominated sport of Jiu Jitsu. I was recently part of a all female event called Fight to Win, and it was quite fun. Um, those are very rare events. It has happened in the past before, but this was a time like where we actually had a full card and there was lots of supporters. There was lots of it was broadcasted on uh, a grappling application. So many people saw and not just the people that were at the event. So it was really cool. Um, pretty much. I just wanted to talk to you guys about it. So I did have questions that I asked people to submit questions to me. And we'll do those at the end. I just want to talk about the experience in general because it was quite fun, you know. Um, <laughs> I got to be on stage. I hadn't been on stage since I was like 12 years old in middle school. And I was a star of a play. Of course, my Leo self, you know. Sorry, I had to throw in my astrology there. But yeah, that was the last time I was on a stage where there was lights and people staring at me. Uh, I also hadn't competed in jiu-jitsu in about a year because of the pandemic. So I was very on and off, you know, paranoid. It's a very close contact sport. But since our our academy is very small, um, towards the end of the year, I started to gain a little more confidence in going and training. And one of my teammates, uh, one of my higher belt friends told me I should just apply to this event you know whatever they call me I, I get to do one fight instead of a tournament where I don't have to fight multiple people and you know increase my risk of exposure so I said yeah sure why not that sounds great so I did and I got contacted for the female event and I was you know this is crazy this has never happened I definitely wanted to be a part of it and you know and it was tough finding an opponent I had three no four girls either say no or cancel altogether that I know of, you know, this is, he may have had the guy that running the event may have had more offers to female that he just didn't tell me, but it was not until the fourth girl finally that I got a fight, you know, I'm going to blame the pandemic possibly, but either way, even without the pandemic, it's like that for girls in this sport, it's very hard to find opponents because we're rare, especially the ones that go higher than blue because you know blue belts quit right a lot of blue belts quit that's the whole theory or whatever whatever the hell you call it and now if you're a girl that's another factor like we're already not that prominent in the sport and then once and it's a tough thing jujitsu is tough you have to battle a lot of mental demons outside demons but it's i honestly think it's great for like personal growth and discipline and stress relief murdering people you know, <laughs> but so to pretty much prepare myself for that, I only had two weeks because I applied. And then two weeks later, he said I could do the event and he was finding me an opponent. And then I got injured, you know, a week later. So I only had about a week and a half to heal. Um, and then this whole time it was back and forth with the opponents. At the end of the day, you know, I was feeling good enough to go in and do the event. So I did. I just wrapped up my hand. My coach wrapped up my hand real good. And I went in there and hoping that, you know, today was meant for me to be there no matter what. Um, let's see. Okay. So I want to talk about how I felt before, during, and after the match. Before, like I said, you know, I was pretty nervous. I'm not used to being watched by so many people. You're the main focus. There's, you don't have... 10 other matches going on, you know, everyone's looking at you or not looking at you because you're boring, you know, whatever. It could be either way. Uh, but before, you know, mentally, I felt like I need more preparation. I was a little nervous because of my injury, so I wasn't getting to train as much as I could have. I was also working a lot, so it was a little difficult to train, and that was what, make, what was making me nervous, honestly. But I started listening to motivational speeches, and that really started, you know, getting me in that mental state of, I can do this. 
I'm meant to do this. I can, if I can dream it, I can achieve it, essentially, which is pretty much my philosophy. Like, if I can think of it and say I'm going to do it, I can do it if I put in the work. You know, in reality, if you put all the work that you can into something, you can do it. That's the reality of things. Um, I also started an MA kickboxing thing called, it's like a, a workout program called Undefeated that I do. And that also helped me prepare for it mentally before my fight. I wasn't so anxious as I normally am. I get really intense anxiety before I'm going to compete or fight. But the last time that I did, a year ago, I went into my tournament and I felt ready. You know, I felt like, yes, I want to show off my jujitsu. I want to show what I can do. I'm so excited. Let's get this over with. Like, I was just waiting for so long, you know, because you have to wait all day for your time to fight. And I was just pumped, you know, and it ended up going well. I ended up being able to do my 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 style of jujitsu, my brand. And, and I had fun. And that was the feeling I was looking for. I didn't want the jitters. I didn't want the butterflies. That's not the feeling I want. That's when I get like panic attacks when I'm like claustrophobic or, you know, that's when I start getting in my head or, or I blank out and I just don't do anything. And I'm just there like, what am I doing? So, you know, I was looking for that feeling of, yes, I'm pumped. I'm ready. Let's do this. And I had that feeling the day before. I was relaxed. I was calm. You know, I had been doing a lot of meditation and visualization so that was helping me. And up until like right before, that's when the adrenaline kicked in. And, um, you know, I was straight up tunnel vision. Like I was in the zone. I was ready. I don't like to talk to my opponent beforehand because <laughs> I've been tricked that way. Uh, I talked this one girl like she in one of my tournaments, she comes up to me and she's like, hey, you're in my bracket, right? And I'm like, yes, I think so. Because, you know, they had like little photo icons of your opponents. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's so nice. And then I go, you know, I do my first match. I destroy that girl. And then this bitch, I mean, beep. <laughs> this girl, I mean, this girl comes at me like I am not going to be able to walk off this mat. And that was because my guard dropped a little because she was so kind, you know? So I, after that, I don't like to talk to my opponents until after I fight them. Because after that, it's like, okay, I already know what I can do. I don't have any assumptions about you, you know? So that was important. And I could tell she wanted, that my opponent wanted to talk. She was nervous, but I couldn't. I just couldn't. <laughs> um... So during my fight, I felt great. I, I went in aggressive. I started doing what I wanted to do. Some things got a little wonky. Um, they did stop the fight in the middle of a submission, which was kind of upsetting. Um, but she was bleeding, so fair enough. So they had to restart. But at this point, like I could already feel like my jelly arm. Like, oh, my God. Like, the adrenaline was flowing the blood was flowing I could not feel my arms my legs were getting there and I still had another two minutes to go so I obviously expended way more energy than I thought I was going to that's also something that's important and you need to be able to judge how much energy you're using because you need to be able to survive a duration of time right and be able to be efficient with your attacks so that happened, you know, we scrambled a bit back and forth. There was moments that I was having like weird mental lapse in judgment. Like my body would like, I don't know, go for the leg or something. Right. And then I'm there and I'm like, what are you doing? You don't even have what you need to do the attack you're trying to do. And I'm just like, you're right. Like, what am I doing? And I would have to let go and just, you know, move on, <laughs> which is really important. But, you know, there was also there's clearly like some form of fatigue there uh, clouding my mental judgment. So I had to keep pushing through that. But, you know, you just never give up. That's like I kept telling myself, I'm like, don't stop. Don't give up. Keep going. Even if you're on the bottom, you know, just keep, you feel your intuition and trust it. Because that's really what's going to get you to the day when you're tired, your intuition. Um, so even though I was feeling my fatigue, I was still able to set up my attack again that I originally had before they stopped us. And I was going for the kill again, but she was able to scramble out. Remember, I'm a little more tired this time around. 
and we scramble a little bit back and forth, almost fall off the stage. They reset us again. Luckily, my husband trained me for this. He literally would let me grapple him and then he would stop, make me get up and make me restart. And he did that. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful he did that for me because it helped a lot because that's what always happens in these matches. You get reset like eight times and it really interferes with the flow of things. Um, they should really just make these uh, match, mats bigger, like way bigger. Okay. But moving on from that, I only had 20 seconds left after that last reset. So I went for like a pull down. Uh, she slipped out and she was able to escape. I fell to the floor because <laughs> I was so tired. And I just went into, you know what? I only have 20 seconds. I can defend myself. I know I'm not going to lose here at this point. I, I'm i good. And that's exactly what happened. So, you know, that was really exciting. Um, things played out very well for me. My opponent was super sweet and young, you know. I love meeting the girls that I fight with after we fight because, you know, it's, you really learn that it's just a small community. You know, while I was there, after I fought, I started noticing girls that I had fought, you know, in previous belt levels or current belt levels. Like I saw a girl there that I had fought as a white belt and a girl that I fought as a blue belt apparently was there as well. You know, and they're all they're all evolving and I'm I'm here, but I'm, I'm getting to them. You know, I'm going to. I'm going to get there eventually, and then we'll get to fight again, and it's going to be really fun. Because I haven't had a... I have one rival, I guess, where you could say who fought twice only. But I would like to have more because, you know, it's really exciting. And like I said, the girl community is very small, and the more we, the more girls we get in here, the funner it can be. It's really, truly amazing. I, I want to inspire other girls to try jujitsu because it teaches you a whole level of discipline and strength and courage and sisterhood like i said i love the friends that i make in jujitsu they're amazing um oh they also <laughs> also something that was funny i forgot to mention as i was coming out for my song you know i chose this epic instrumental song and i was so ready and i'm here using the bathroom, right? I'm about to go upstage. I'm like, you know what? Let me just go one more time. Make sure no one's, you know, crushing any bladders <laughs> while we're fighting. And I hear my song come on. I hear my song come on and I flip. And I'm like, oh my God, it's my turn. I get ready. I come out and they're like, no, it's not your turn. I'm like, but that's my song. And they're like, oh, well, don't be surprised if you have to walk out to some Brazilian song. I'm like, are you serious? This is my debut. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I'm not going to let it get to me. And that's exactly what happened. I walk out to some crazy song I don't even know, can't jam out to, and I'm just laughing as I walk out and I stretch. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Let's do this. But I, you know what? I think it's good because it put me in like a, a looser state of mind instead of being so like, I'm going to kill you. You know, even though I was still thinking that. Even though you can't tell in the video because I'm smiling the whole time. But in my head, I'm like, yes, yes, murder, murder. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Dun, pa, stu, dun, pa. But giant smile the whole time, <laughs> which really shows that, you know, I love this sport. It's really, it's like a giant puzzle always. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. You have to do it to understand, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so I ended up winning by decision and I was very tired. I guessed that a lot faster than I thought I would. I did have to cut some weight, you know, three days before I had to cut about five pounds, but which I don't like doing, but I really wanted to fight. So I did it anyway. After all that, it was memorable. They ended up doing a group photo of all the girls and talking about how it was one of like the very few successful female events that, um, you know, totally surpassed their expectations on views from that application that was streaming it, and also from ticket sales. Even though our event didn't sell out like the male events, they were still you know profitable and that's really important because it's really important to support women and women in jiu-jitsu because there's so little of us so any girls you know don't be scared 
Don't be scared to try new things. Don't be scared to put yourself out there. Don't be scared to ask questions to the other girls. I'm sure all of them are happy that you're there because it's very different when you grapple a male from when you drop, grapple a female. Even if they're lighter or heavier, like women tend to use more technique more than anything. And that's what's best for us at the end of the day for training because that's who we're going to fight. We're not fighting men in these tournaments. So training is difficult when you think about it that way. So to the questions, I had um, a few questions that were asked of me. One of them was, what's my next move in learning how to train better for these types of events? What I noticed was what I, like I mentioned earlier, there's a bit of a disconnect with my body and my mind. Um, when I'm tired, sometimes I'll physically do something and my mind would question it and be like, what are you doing? That's not what we're doing. You don't, you don't have what you need. Move on. But at least I was able to catch that, you know? So that's something that is really important. Sometimes you kind of just go into this autopilot mode and then that's not the best way to win. That's when you kind of lose focus. You have to be in the moment, super present, super aware of what's going on and what you're doing and what they're doing. Wasn't that aware of my opponent? I was very aware of myself and what I was doing and reacting but there were moments that I could catch myself noticing the movement of my opponent and then me reacting. And I loved that. That Those are the moments that I am seeking. That is what helps growth. So I really want to focus on that and, and using my legs more because I know they're powerful and strong and I know they can kill. <laughs> um, the next question was, has competing inspired any new thoughts on your progression? And the answer to that is always. I always can see a weakness in my matches. E even if I overall do well, I can always see something. You know, many people should be able to catch something that they've, they've done wrong and be able to address that and fix it so that nobody can pass or, you know, nobody can beat you next time from that mistake that you've made. And I hope that I can keep that mentality even years after receiving my black belt. I also, for my progression, I definitely want to not only be aware of myself, but be, catch more of those moments of being aware of what my opponent is doing and with how they're moving and the openings. Because I'm seeing them a little faster now, but you know, obviously it's not up to par. I'm still relatively... A medium level pill, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. The next question was, what's my next move on how to train better? My next move is pretty much to continue those MMA kickboxing videos that I've been doing because that hand foot coordination, I thought I had it. I do not. My coach constantly tells me, your legs aren't doing anything, you know, it's either your arms are doing something or your legs are doing something. And it needs to be cohesive. They both need to be working. And doing this kickboxing and MMA punching, like, that's really helping me coordinate my whole body together. It's, I can definitely see the improvement from the first video to a few weeks later, I can actually keep up with the instructor and not get lost in the moves because your brain has to keep up, your body and your brain have to keep up with what this person is telling you to do. And they're giving it to you physically and they're saying it verbally. So it's like, it's it's very interesting. And I think it definitely helps improve uh, your jujitsu, whoever you may be. I'm also going to continue listening to those motivational speeches because they really boosted my confidence. Even though these are things that I say to myself all the time, you know, it was nice to hear it back to back from somebody else, you know, reiterating my own feelings basically solidifying that like it's true like we can do this you can dream it you can freaking achieve it and it's awesome and you're gonna feel great about yourself and you're gonna experience joys of life that you never thought you can you could experience it's just beyond like the feeling like all those endorphins all the endorphins <laughs> And I'll continue to keep showing up even when I know I'm tired and I'm working a lot and I'm doing a lot of things. I will continue to show up because I know every time I show up, I get better. Even if it's just this much or this much. 
you know, every time I show up, I get better. And I, I cannot determine my level of how much I improved that day, but I know that I improved. And everybody does. The last question was, how did you feel about your support going into the fight? Uh, honestly, you know, even though it wasn't, you know, my whole team, like the first event with uh, first few males that we had to compete, we had like the whole squad because it was a Saturday. Unfortunately, the following two events were on a Friday and people had to work. So, but even then with the handful of teammates that I had show up for me, which I am truly grateful. Okay, I'm going to stop because I'm going to cry for a second. <laughs> Love you guys. Um, you know, that was really nice having them there and cheer for me. Having my mom there, you know, I usually get nervous with family watching, at least before and not so much anymore, I guess. Which is good because, you know, I like to show off like, hey, look what I can do, mom and dad, you know. <laughs> Um, but you know, it was really great. Uh, my husband was there, my coach was there, and they were all there for me. My squad was there from afar watching, I knew they were watching, I knew they were gonna want to hear about it. They were all there for me, and I felt it and I loved it. And I think it really helped. I even asked for like a spirit bomb, I was like, Spirit bomb me, guys, <laughs> and it totally worked okay because I won, so whatever. But yeah, I just wanted to give. You know, I wanted to give my best for me and for them because we're all there to support each other. And that was the last question. So, you know, at, at the end, my intention for doing this video is to inspire other females to look into the sport, to have the courage to go beyond what they think their limits are, to, you know, break the gap with the glass ceiling. You know, we can do whatever we want to do, male and female. We can dream whatever we want to dream and we can achieve it if we truly want to. If we put in the effort, we can get whatever we want. And the bonds that you form are definitely everlasting. They're very strong and it's like a family. The, the jiu-jitsu community itself is very small. So imagine the female <laughs> jiu-jitsu community, even smaller. And they're all such great girls and it just shows you a whole other side of the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was just me crying <laughs> and laughing and rambling. But I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions about jujitsu or at all, anything, um, don't be afraid to reach out. Bye. Oh, yeah. I always forget. Like and subscribe, guys. Come on. Like it. Like it good and subscribe. Bye.